At this point, we have a functional package that retrieves data from our DIM customers table and retrieves the email address and the customer name that we then use to send out an email. But our next step is to actually modify this package and count up the number of emails that are sent out and provide that value in a second email that goes out to an administrator to say, here's the number of emails that were sent out in this particular execution of the package. So to do that, we need to start by adding a variable where we're capturing the increment of the package iteration through each of the um, uh, records returned in the execute SQL task result set. So we're going to go to the SSIS menu and add a variable here. And we can see that we have the three variables that we've already established, the customer name, the email address as part of what we're sending out to the send email, and then the customers is the result set from retrieve customer emails. Now when I want to add in a new variable, I want to be very careful what I do before I add that variable into this list. We have a toolbar here that has a button for adding new variables. I can also delete variables or I can show just the system variables or show all of the variables and I can also um, change the types of columns that are displayed in this variables window. But if I were to say select the execute SQL task before I add in a new variable, then you can see that the scope is established as the scope of that particular execute SQL task, which limits the usefulness of that particular variable in other parts of the package. So I'm going to delete this. And we'll add in another variable again. So you want to be sure that nothing is selected and the best way to make sure that nothing is selected, particularly if you have a lot of tasks in your package, is just to click anywhere in the background. And then go ahead and click your add variable button. And make sure that the scope matches the scope for other variables that you know are part of the package scope just to make sure that that's correct. So I'm going to give this a name, email counter, and then you can see that there are other properties associated with this variable. We have a data type of int32 by default, which is correct for our purposes here, and a default value of zero. So we're all set now to use this variable. I'm now going to add a script task to the for each loop container and the purpose of the script task then is to increment that variable value each time that the for each loop container um, is processed successfully and we successfully send out the email we're going to update the variable value by one so I'll add a precedent constraint here to ensure that the script task is only executed when the email task goes out successfully. And I'm going to edit this script task. I'm going to skip over to the general page so I can rename the, the script task and I'm going to call this increment email counter. And then returning to the first page, the script page, we can see that I have a choice of script language. It defaults to C Sharp, but I also have the option to use Visual Basic if I prefer. The starting method in the uh, script task will be main. And then I need to decide whether I'm going to use variables from the package in my script task. And of course, since I just set up the email counter, I need to include that here. I can put the name in here and I, want, I need to be sure that I use the proper case because variables are case sensitive. So you might find it better just to use the dialog box here to select your variable directly and then you make sure that you have it spelled out correctly. So I have uh, the email counter is the one I want to use. Now if you're typing these out and you need to use several variables in the same box, you would do a comma separation between them. Now, um, in opening the script, then that opens up the Visual Studio uh, for Applications environment here, the Visual Studio Tools for Applications, abbreviated as VSTA. 
and it includes a lot of code already that's been generated for you and we just need to skip down to the main method so we can see that we have um, just a single line of code here that you need to have some task result that gets sent back to your package when the script task completes so I'm going to go ahead and add in some code that I have in my clipboard and you can see that I initialize this script with a task result value of failure so then that means that the steps in the task need to execute and complete and the final task or step there is to set the task result back to success if anything goes wrong during this process there is a try catch block here the catch block will also set a value of failure but by setting up the code this way I can be sure that only when the try block completes successfully will the task result end in success and of course if it skips the catch and goes to the end line for execution we would also have a success line here so what we're doing in this particular uh, script task is we're looking at the variables collection so we've populated that with the email counter back in the configuration of the script task and we're looking at the value and what we're saying is take that value and increment it by one and making sure that that's set to a date of type of integer so we're just increasing that when the script task executes so it's a very simple straightforward script task and anytime we create a script task in here we need to pre-compile this so we just right click on the project name and do a build and that pre-compiles the code and stores it in our package so it increases the side of, size of the package a bit because it's not compiling just before execution but it does mean that it executes very quickly and we'll close this and now that's part of our package and click OK now one thing to note about the VSTA environment is your script task uh, developer development environment is that you can set your debugging and use watch windows and anything else that you would normally use in your development environment so it's very easy to debug your script tasks with those tools okay so now we have a counter implemented and our next step is to add a send mail task to our package we're going to send it after all of the iterations of the for each loop container have completed so I'm going to click on the for each loop task to access the precedent constraint and then connect that to the send mail task here now I want to do something different with this particular send mail task I don't want to send the mail out unless I have exceeded the number of emails that I have defined as a threshold so I'm going to create an expression here to test the current value of the variable so we're going to edit this constraint and change the evaluation operation to constraint to expression and constraint so that not only does the previous task or the container have to complete successfully but we also have to have this expression that I'm about to enter evaluate to true so I'm going to evaluate the current value of the variable when I refer to a variable I need to precede it with an at sign so I'll do email counter and that is case sensitive so you want to be careful with that and then I'm going to create a test condition here so I'm going to do a greater than six now we know that the current uh, result set will return 10 records and so if everything proceeds properly in the execution of the for each loop container I should get 10 emails and as a result this expression should be true now there's a test button here and that just tests the syntax to make sure that I've entered in an expression that's, that can be evaluated as either true or false. If I wanted to test for a particular value for equality I would use equal equal instead of the greater than symbol here. So it's like working with C language where you need to use the double equal sign to represent equality. 
OK, so the precedent constraint is configured. We'll click OK. And you can see that this little expression sign has been added, and I can point to it and see what the expression is. So I know by looking at this package design that the send mail task down below will only execute when the for each loop container completes successfully and when this particular expression here evaluates as true as well. So now I need to configure the last send mail task. I'll give this a different name. All of your tasks need to have unique names, otherwise you will get an error. So I'm going to say notify management here, and we'll go to the mail page. And we have our SMTP connection already defined, so I can just pick it off the list here. And then I will do SSIS at adventureworks.com as the sender. And then in the to box, I'm going to send this to the administrator. And in the subject line, I will put the defa defect threshold has been exceeded. And of course I can set the priority as well. Change this to high. And now I want to go to the expressions because the message will depend upon how many messages actually were sent out. I want to include the actual number in the body of the message. So that would be the message source property. So we'll select message source and go to the expression builder. And I'll type in a string email sent and then concatenate the value. Now the data type of that variable is an integer, so I need to do a conversion first. And conversion functions are available in the typecast folder. So I'm going to select the this one here. Oops. With a length of 10, first convert this to a string. And then we can add in the variable. email counter. Just drag and drop that in. And we're set. So here I can evaluate the expression. Oh, we have a truncation occurring. Um, actually I need to change the... I didn't grab the correct variable here. Let's try that again. User email counter. and then evaluate the expression and you can see that email sent zero so this is an example of how you can test your expression to make sure that it comes out the way that you intend it to now this value is currently initialized at zero and of course will change as we go through the for each loop processing okay so we're all set here close up all of our windows and we'll execute the package. And of course, because we had 10 iterations, we get the final email that is sent out to notify management. So we'll switch back to our drop file and our folder and I think this last one will be our message to the administrator nope not that one
And actually we can see by hovering over the subject line Actually, look at the uh, the last date and time stamp, and we can see here's the defect threshold exceeded. And we can open this up and confirm that we did indeed send out 10 emails. So there you can see we've done several things in our control flow. We've got different tasks, the execute SQL task and the send mail task and a script task, as well as a for each loop container. We've set up precedent constraints just as uh, based on success, as well as precedent constraints using an expression. We've used variables to hold information that we um, initialized early in the package and then was able to reuse later for different purposes. So now you should have a good idea of how to work with control flow components.